What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance Crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Today I have another Geography Now. I always have to stop and make sure I don't say geometry. <laughs> uh, I have another Geography Now video for you. This is the episode related to Ireland. Now, I am a somewhat informed American. I know the difference between Ireland and North Ireland. I know the UK does not include Ireland. <laughs> uh, there are some um, there are some things that I tend to have questions about. Like um, I know that Ireland and uh, the UK in particular have been fighting for a long time, or were fighting for a long time. I'm pretty sure their relationship is softened in the uh, since like the 80s, I believe. But um, I'm just curious because, for example, in during the uh, World War II, China had a civil war between the communists and the nationalists. And during the World War II, they kind of had a truce and put their differences aside to fight against the invading Japanese uh, military. I'm wondering, did the UK and Ireland have kind of a similar truce during World War II? Or did Ireland not really give a damn because I don't ever remember hearing about Ireland being attacked by Germany? I... I like I, I don't really know, but I, that will that's something that's just kind of been in the back of my head. I, if you guys know, be sure to leave it in the comment section down below. But with that being said, let's jump into this and see what it has to offer. I'm always curious to learn more about our Ireland brothers and sisters. Oops, one second, one second. I'm <laughs> I'm having to start the recording for the thing again. So, recording now. There we go now. I'm going to be restarting this now. Hey everyone, we reached the land of one eighth of my own heritage, Ireland, which means I'm probably a far off distant cousin of our favorite Irishman, Potter. For those who don't know, Potter has helped us out with many of the animations in the past, and Potter has been such a great guy, so we decided to fly well, Potter out like here that. to literally be in <laughs> Potter's own country's video. Potter, you rock, man. It's pronounced Potter. <laughs> Potter. <laughs> It's time to learn geography now! Eh, too late. I've been calling you Potter for like two years now. I'm not changing my mind. Anyway, we've reached <laughs> Ireland! And I'm here to correct him if he gets anything wrong. So don't worry, lads. Yeah, that is so true, Potter. <laughs> oh, well, damn. What feels like. Ah, the Emerald Isle. Europe's rain shield. The McNugget. Ireland is loaded with so many notable McNugget. spots and regions. <laughs> and there's a town called Dingle. Okay. First of all, Ireland is the third largest <laughs> island in Europe, located in the North Atlantic Ocean, separated from Great Britain by the North Channel, the Irish Sea, and St. George's Channel. Eh, did you notice how I deliberately avoided British Isles? Uh, yeah, good call. Now, here's where things get a little confusing. Ireland's subdivisions. Let's just get it over with quick and fast. So, when discussing the independent sovereign state, most people are referring to the Republic of Ireland, which makes up these five six of the island. And unless mentioned otherwise, this is the Ireland we'll be mostly discussing in this episode. To this day, the last fifth northern part of Ireland here is actually part of the UK, and it doesn't even quite know exactly what to label itself. Some call it a province, some say it's a region, some say it's a constituent country, but the point is, the UK holds on to it. Which, as you can imagine, has created some interesting feelings in the past with the Irish. It's weird though, because the people here can choose their own citizenship, be it British, Irish, or both. On the west side, the North Ireland border just juts into the farmland, ending at a small village called Manger, and provides a seven kilometer wide quarter to the town of Bundoran for the rest of the Republic to enter into Donegal County. And then you have the strange Penny Enclave right across the Finn River, with only a tenth of a kilometer wide entrance that wow. Ireland Bradwin is still part of Monaghan County. This, in return, gave a small exclave to the UK, an unnamed patch of land with only three small farming homes. The only way to get in besides swimming across the river would be by taking the most name-switched international road on the island, the Irish N54, which turns into the A3 highway once you cross into Northern Ireland, then it switches back into the N54 once you cross into the exclave, then it reverts back to the A3 again for about two kilometers, and then back to the N54 once you cross back into the Republic of Ireland. Mm. So literally, it's like Irish, British, Irish, British, Irish. Or as I like to call it, my dating life. Ah! Also, the UK petty. is like, eh, instead just of following the, damn the name. river all the way up to Foyle Lock, why don't we just swerve left through the farmland to take the entire city of Derry? Because, hey, logic! Basically, to an Irish person, the entire island of Ireland, including Northern Ireland, is just Ireland. So, if you consider the administrative divisions, the Republic of Ireland is divided into 26 counties. However, many also include the extra six from Northern Ireland and call it 32. But then there's the two city and county councils, Limerick and Waterford, and the three city councils, Dublin, Galway, and 
Cork, making 31 local authorities in the Republic of Ireland, and technically 37 again if you include Northern Ireland's hmm. counties and the capital of Dublin. Sounds about right. Okay, yeah, good Ooh, job. I got that right. Woo. Historically, though, <laughs> Ireland was also kind of split into four provinces that many people still refer to today. They are Connacht, Leinster, Munster, and Ulster. Northern Ireland is often referred to as Ulster, Monster. as it encompasses most of the counties that make up the historical province. Otherwise, the largest cities after Dublin are Cork and Limerick, with the largest airports being Dublin, Cork, and Shannon airports. Keep in mind, if Northern Ireland was included in this, Belfast would take the number two spot. Ohio has a places. Dublin. In addition to being an island itself, Ireland also hosts hundreds of smaller little islands and islets. The most populated ones being Great Island by Cork, Ackle Island in Mayo, and Grumna and the Iron Islands in Galway. Finally, some places of interest across Ireland might include places like Trinity College, the Guinness Storehouse, the Neolithic Tomb of Newgrange, which is older than the Pyramids of Giza, the Rock of wow. Cashel, Glendalough in Wicklow, the Blarney Stone of Cork, that island that was filmed at the, the end of Star Wars is called Skellig Michael, Tory Island, which kind of has like its own king, Scotia's Grave, where an Egyptian princess is buried, supposedly. I didn't know about that one. You didn't even know that. Wow. I just found it off of Atlas Obscura. The Mound of Hostages, wow. The Cade of Fields, the Sky Garden, Hookhead Lighthouse, the oldest continuously used lighthouse still operating in Europe. So you live right next to it. Yeah. Sean's Bar, the oldest surviving pub and possibly the entire world. And of course, way too many churches, abbeys, yeah. castles, dolmens, tombs, everything else to list. Way too many of them. Way too many. Of them. Oh, and avoid Temple Bar, right? In Dublin, that's like a tourist yeah. trap and you can't actually meet any real Irish people there. It's just yeah. don't go there. Don't yeah. go to Temple Bar. Go to, go to Coppers. <laughs> Coppers. Yeah. Ah, beer. You guys know your way around the pint, don't you? Oh, well, Irish people do, but I I don't actually drink. Oh, okay. Huh. After that man, I killed. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ireland is very green. Don't ask the questions. The end. Uh, all right, so there's a little bit more to it than that. Ireland is a post-glacial carved mineral and sandstone island with about 12 small mountain ranges, the majority of which are located in the north, west, and south. You'll notice looking at the map that the east coast of Ireland seems to be relatively smooth and straight, whereas the west coast of Ireland seems to be all choppy and serrated with inlets and peninsulas. Almost like if you took a ball of clay and just spread it across a flat surface in one direction. <laughs> one direction. Anyway, the tallest peak is Mount Carntool at about 1,000 meters. And the longest and most important river being the River Shannon and a large lake on the entire island Ireland being Loch Ney in Northern Ireland. However, if we're talking about the Republic of Ireland, the largest would be Loch Corrib in West Galway. The west side is also home to the most notable natural landmark, the Cliffs of Moher that rise about 120 meters straight up from the ocean. Otherwise, you have the Sleevely cool. Cliff a bit further up north and in the UK's Northern Ireland, it's you like Highlander. have the Giant's Causeway, a series of hexagonal volcanic plug steps that just jut into the ocean side. I love how you say that. Hexagonal. Hexagonal. <laughs> Hexagonal. 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 Now, despite being located fairly north in latitude, Ireland actually experiences a strange weather phenomena in which it actually kind of acts like a rain shield for the UK. It takes all the warm air released by the North Atlantic Gulf Stream that starts all the way from the Caribbean. This means that although Ireland is on the same relative latitude as Newfoundland, Canada, they remain about 9 degrees Celsius or about 17 degrees Fahrenheit warmer, rarely reaching the freezing point, which in return means they hardly ever get snow. However, that again in return means Ireland gets a ton of rain. Like seriously, over half the year is drenched. You only get like two months of sunshine and then it's back to the downpour. I mean, wouldn't mm. that make you guys like kind of depressed? Why do you think drinking's a thing in Ireland? <laughs> Speaking of which, the abundance of rain allows Ireland to actually flourish in flora and agriculture, giving it its trademark green color. Common crops being spuds, sugar beets, and grains like barley, oats, and wheat, which as you can imagine, has a large portion that goes towards Ireland's most famous product, beer. Beer! Ireland without beer is like Mexico without tacos, Koreans without kimchi, Argentinians without salsa, Bob Saget without his telekinetic laser vision. Yeah, beer culture is such an integral part of being Irish that even priests and nuns get in on the action and share a pint of Guinness. Which, by the way, the Bible never condemns alcohol, just drunkenness, so know your limits. Yeah, we go to confessional a lot. Otherwise, some top notable <laughs> Irish dishes might include things like... Box tea. Potato bread. Brown and soda bread. Bacon and cabbage. Too many suits to list, like coddle and Irish stew, black pudding, Good oysters, color. and Guinness. And overall, you can... It looked good until Black Pudding popped up. Oysters and Guinness. You can find potatoes cooked in various ways with like everything. In addition, Ireland is also the perfect habitat for about 26 species of mammals like the red fox, European hedgehog, the stoat, pygmy shrew, and badger. And the one land reptile that is native to the country, the viviparous lizard. Speaking of which, no, the story of St. Patrick driving all the snakes out of Ireland was probably not true. Ireland most likely never had snakes due to its geographic isolation from the rest of Europe. And also St. Patrick probably wasn't Irish, he was Welsh. Yeah, lots of misconceptions when it comes to Irish people. Which brings us to... Demographic. Hey, so Potter. I <laughs> Oh, God damn. Sorry. Patter. So what does it mean to be Irish? Oh, we're all about the crack in Ireland, so we are. Yeah, crack. 
What? Crack? Crack, crack every day and night of the week. We love the crack cider. DA Freeze has more concealed! <laughs> Common misconception. See, we're not actually talking about drugs, we're talking about crack. Ireland loves crack! crack. We're not allowed to oh. First of all, Ireland has about 4.8 million people, over 6 million if you include Northern Ireland, and has the highest birth rate in the EU. About 83% of the country identifies as ethnically Irish, Get whereas about 9.5% are white of other nationalities, whereas the remainder of the country is other groups like Asians, blacks, and who knows, probably some magical wizards or something. So the country uses the euro as their currency, they also use the type G plug outlet, and they drive on the left side of the road. Now, thanks to modern media, everyone probably has at least a little bit of exposure to the stereotypical Irish culture one way or another, you know, like river dance or yeah. leprechaun, or yeah. river dancing leprechauns. But there's an entire world to the deep-rooted Irish identity. First of all, the language. Technically, Ireland, or at least the Republic of Ireland, is a bilingual country that uses both Irish and English, although English is used far more often than Irish ever is. The Irish language is related to other Celtic-based languages spoken in Scotland, Wales, and to some extent, Brittany in France. Just when you thought you were safe after the Iceland episode, Irish comes along and suddenly M and H make a V sound, D and H make a G or Y sound. Now... Obviously, I feel like I like Irish. I knew that it had a language, but for some reason, I thought that was just like a. I thought that like the accent was the language itself. <laughs> like they just took the the way they say certain words and just made that an actual language with like spelling and stuff that was different. But I don't know. Do they have like an actual like thing? Like if I, if somebody was speaking actual English or Irish, would I be able to understand it? I'm not talking about accents, I'm talking about like the fundamentals of their language. Would I be able to understand real Irish? I don't know. Sound B, H, and F sometimes make like a W sound. All right, Paul, let's say you take a shot at saying these words. All right. R, I, I, G, L, A, T. Nope. R, I, G, L, A, T. It means go on. Ta, V, Talk. Okay, so uh, it is a it. different it's language. Talk, it means important. Letras. No. Lehurst, it means toilet. Fail nacht. Actually, that was just one I made up. But nice try. <clears throat> Sounds like y'all are just trying to make like Viking languages. Just y'all can sound badass. I, that, I'm not gonna lie. It does sound cool. But whatever. I can imagine like somebody on, on a, like a, a battlefield. Imagine somebody screaming that shit to you. Draws or not draws, but bows instantly cleared. For a long time, the language was suppressed and discouraged by the English-speaking rulers to the point where a couple of generations were greatly affected and grew up barely knowing their own native tongue. Today, the language has seen a huge resurgence and is one of the core subjects in most primary and secondary schools. Although less than half the population claims to be fluent in Irish and only a few communities actually speak it regularly in daily life, the Irish language is still survives into the 21st century. All the public signs are posted in both languages. They even have an Irish-speaking TV channel, radio station, and even an online newspaper. In order to get a real Feel of Ireland, though, you kind of have to know a little bit of history, which will take way too long to explain, but in the quickest way we can put it... Stone Age. Celtic culture comes in. Chiefdoms. High Kings. Christianity. Vikings. Normans. Castles got built. Black Death. Henry VIII split from the Catholic Church and attacked. Ulster Plantation and quasi-English rule Oliver Cromwell. Wars. Theobald Wolfe, who led a failed rebellion. Potato Famine. Tons moved to the US and Scotland. Gaelic Revival. North doesn't agree. Conflict and persecution against Catholics. Home Rule. Home Rule suspended. World War One, Eastern Rising. IRA fights. Irish Civil War. Free Staters won. World War II, they remain mostly neutral. 1969 civil rights marches. Northern okay. Ireland gets more drama. They join the EU. Good Friday Agreement. Celtic Tiger. Financial crisis. But they still grow and move forward. And here we are today. Okay, so during World War II, they were pretty much neutral. Um, does that still include the battles with the uh, UK? I, I'm, still, I'm still trying to figure that out. Friday Agreement, Celtic Tiger, Financial Crisis, but they still grow and move forward. And here we are today. As mentioned, the largest ethnic group of people in Ireland, the Irish, come from a long line of people known as the Celts or the Celtic. It's Celtic, Boston. Celtic. Yeah, I have no Thousands idea how they ago, the Celts roamed all across Celtic, continental that's... Europe. However, the rise of empires and warring people groups kind of pushed them thought they would ask into the Isles. And the Celts had an incredibly complex system of tribes or clans and families that dominated certain regions with their own chiefs and kings. This is partially why so many people in Ireland have Mech or the, the almost exclusively Irish used O prefix, prefixes in their last names, which translates to son or descendant. Prior to Christianity, hmm. Celts were primarily farmers and cattle herders with pagan and druid roots. With some controversy 
controversial practices recorded by the Romans. Christianity came in, and then Catholicism played a huge role, even to this day. However, certain ancient traditions still lived on, like the festival of Sabin? <laughs> really? But I thought M and H make a V sound. Nah, it depends. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Ugh, your language. Sound later became known as Halloween, which became popularized and is celebrated all across the world today. However, originally they used to use turnip lanterns, not pumpkins. Folklore and tradition is strong. We've all heard of leprechauns, but there's also Fionn McCool and the Fianna of the Fenian cycle, Cucullin the Hound, Dearborn and Grania, similar to the Princess Isolde and Tristan, the Arthurian me. legend, and so much more. And the two most popular sports, which are almost never played anywhere else in the world, Gale Look football and hurling. Oh, yeah, that's like a Irish uh, quick. I did a video on hurling. Yeah, don't call I'll it. I'll try to link oh, it. Oh, yeah, this is a hurl. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. How do you play with that? Why don't we ask Jason Statham? Speaking of which, there is no universal Irish accent. You get different uh, dialects from different regions. For example, Moses Tasser thinks he's great. Now he's on YouTube, I'll wrap this hole round his neck. Big fat head on him. Well, I we came home on a Monday night. As drunk as drunk could be. I don't know who you are or where you are. And I will find you and return this wallet. Dude, thank God you came here because I would have offended the entire country and gotten stabbed within hours of upload if I attempted that. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, some famous people of Irish descent might include people like... Oscar Wilde. James Joyce. Bram Stoker. Samuel Beckett. Chemist Robert Boyle. Graham Norton. Terry Wogan. The Irish PewDiePie guy. You two and Bono. The script. The Dubliners. Phil Linnett, who I incorrectly refer to as Philly Knott in the Guyana episode. Sorry about no that! Worries. The Cranberries. Enya. Hosier. The Rubber Bandits. The dude from One Direction. What the hell is going on with the rubber bandits? <laughs> what, what was going on in that in that situation? Sorry about no that! Worries. The Cranberries. Enya. Hosier. The Rubber Bandits. The Dude from One Direction. Colin Farrell. Killian Murphy. Brendan Gleeson. Saoirse Ronan. I got that! Nail it. <laughs> Maureen O'Hara. Richard Harris. Uh, Northern Ireland. Liam Neeson. And Michael Fassbender is half Irish, so I guess it kind of counts. Yeah, yeah. Some guy called Conor McGregor. Yeah, Conor, Conor McGregor. Yeah. Oh, and according to that one Malaysian guy from Flag Friday, Westlife and Boyzone. Otherwise, we could go on and on about the rich, complex layers of music, dance, literature, symbolism, artifacts, traditions, festivals, clothing, customs, and legends, but that would take way too long, and if you want to know more, just watch any episode of Fair City or Father Ted. Or you could just like talk to an Irish person as well. Nah, TV's better. TV <laughs> never gets anything wrong. Sure. In the meantime, Ireland's friend zone in three, two, one. No matter where you find them in this world, you know you're gonna be lucky when you find an Irishman. First of all, as an EU member state, Ireland has strong ties to many of their continental it's neighbors, like specifically to Catholic mark. countries like France and Spain. The French and the Irish have a long history of joining up in the squabbles against the British. And about 60% of students in secondary school learn French. Spain is not only close and does good business, but it's also the number one tourist destination for the Irish, as about a quarter of their entire population visits at least once a year. Surprisingly, the Lithuanians have been flocking to Ireland since the 90s after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Union and make up the third largest immigrant group after the British and the Polish. But keep in mind, the Polish, they like go everywhere, so it's no shocker. I mean, remember how they made up like 8% of Iceland's population? Mm -hmm. Now, despite the past drama, Ireland gets along pretty well with the UK. A lot of their imports come from them, and the Irish are an almost integral part of the common British atmosphere, as so many of them live there. And nonetheless, the best friends of Ireland would actually probably be Scotland in the UK and the USA. Scots and the Irish are Celtic brothers that have shared cultures since the beginning, as well as some of the same strifes and struggles. Tons of Irish moved to Liverpool after the potato famine and were generally welcomed by their cousins. I mean, horrible accents aside, have you seen that one scene in Braveheart where the Irish mercenaries backstab the British and join their Scottish cousins? Yeah, like that, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. The USA, though, is like their favorite younger cousin who is a lot bigger and stronger. Not only do about 30% of their exports go to the US, but after the potato famine, hundreds of thousands of Irish came flocking into Ellis Island, and to this day, about 35 million Americans claim to have either partial or full Irish heritage. The largest concentrations on the East Coast in New England. That's yep. about seven times the population of Ireland itself. It even got to me somehow. Thank you, Grandpa, I never met. In conclusion, <laughs> I'm actually gonna give this to you, man. Take it away. Thank you, Paul. In conclusion, Ireland has had to Conor McGregor its way through war, famine, economic recession, terrible leprechaun rapping, and Gerard Butler's we horrible all had to deal with that. in P.S. I Love You. Seriously, man, you're Scottish. It shouldn't be that hard. But through all that, we've managed to be the coolest kid on the block, despite a few emotional issues here and there. We're pretty rad, if I say so myself. Go on, Ireland, you beautiful, drunken mess of a nation, you. And you know what? In honor of your one-eighth Irish lineage, I've decided to bestow on you the title of kind of Irish, I guess. Here's <laughs> one-eighth of an Irish shamrock hmm. tied on with a piece of sellotape. Wow. Thanks, Potter, even though I always get your name wrong. So, yeah. You do. Oh. Title revoked. No! 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 Okay, come on. <laughs> We've been through this. Okay, so it's, it's, it's like batter, but... 
Pat, patter, right? Patter, patter, right? Patter, patter. Score. Stay tuned. Israel is coming up next. Oh, this is going to be. That's going to be a tough one. <laughs> Israel's going to be one for the ages, I guess. Oh man, but yeah, Ireland. Um, yeah, we do have a lot of Irish in America. Um, I believe that there are even uh, certain parts of the country where they have like dedicated communities. Um, where a lot of Irish people get together. What what is it called? Is it Little Ireland? America has a lot of like neighborhoods where it's like Little Tokyo, Little uh, uh, Chinatown, not Little Chinatown, but Chinatown, um, Little Italy, things like that, where uh, people from certain uh, countries come and they tend to get together and form those type of communities. I think it really happened during like... Uh, during the turn of the century in the 20th century I, I've confused the, those two because it's like it's after the 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 century that number begins like it's 1900 but it's the 20th century I always confuse those but um yeah in the beginning when a lot of immigrants were coming into America they started their own communities because America was racist as a, as a mother flucker <laughs> but um yeah uh ireland now i'm trying to figure out i, I gotta learn more about their history like i said I've, I'm, I'm still on the world war ii thing and i don't know why because you guys will answer it by the time this video comes out and i will have learned something <laughs> so just allow me to sit in my ignorance for about maybe one more minute <laughs> and then I'm uh, I'm not gonna look it up because this is one of those this is one of those vaguer abstract answers. So if I try to find it on YouTube or not YouTube but on Google somewhere, it's gonna give me a big ass answer where I'm gonna have to read an entire essay to figure out. But maybe you guys can summarize it much better. Um, to all my Irish brothers and sisters out there, welcome to the Renaissance Crew, and I look forward to seeing you guys around more. I know I already have a lot of uh, Irish subscribers. I have a lot of European subscribers. And I just like hearing more about cultures, especially cultures that are rich. Like English culture is kind of, or at least with me, I consider it like a generic, like there's not a lot of like exotic stuff in it. Whereas Irish, for example, it has a lot more stuff. Like you can, like the the way people dressed in the past and their own language and like just a bunch of stuff that you can put together and be like, oh, that's Irish. Just like any other country out there. And me living in America, we don't really have as much of a culture. I mean, the fact that I'm a black American, it kind of helps because we have created kind of our own culture. <laughs> so in a way, even though I'm American, I still have a bit of a culture. And America, we're still kind of young, so we haven't really had a chance to develop that. Not to mention we live in a modern society. And I feel like modern society, everything is starting to blend together. I guess you could call it globalization or whatever, but I feel like that's what's starting to happen. So we don't like everybody, even though cultures that do have cultures are starting to become the same thing, but they have their past. They can look on and still have that to connect with America. We don't have that past because we're new, but we're modern. So it's like we're generic with everybody else. And it's like we don't really have too much, <laughs> but uh, whatever. I'm still proud to be an American, but. I, I'm proud to have a ton of Europeans and many other countries and cultures that have a chance to be on this channel. Now, I it makes it harder to look into other like to not look into, but it makes it harder to get to know other people in my uh, in my community if they're outside of like Europe and stuff because of the language barrier or barrier, however you say that, and. If there's a way, I'd like to get more Asian uh, fans, um, people from the Middle East, uh, things like that, Africa, and learn more about their cultures from 
a uh, first-hand perspective instead of just reading it from a uh, article or watching a video about it actually having a chance to talk to somebody that lives that life you know that's about that life is a lot more informative than any of those other things but with that being said i've already talked too much i want to thank you guys for coming through one more time uh to enjoy another video if you if you did enjoy it make sure you hit that like button subscribe and share i look forward to seeing you guys on a future video i'm devon da vinci hopefully you've just been a little bit more enlightened despite my ignorance <laughs> and i will give you the deuces and i look forward to seeing you later deuces